work is this thing on? Hello? Okay. Um, my name is Tobias and it is currently uh, the 18th of October and the reason I'm recording this video is I'm recording this because I want to show you how to use the awesome Twitch plugin from Video Copilot to add all sorts of glitches into your video. Now, I love using this plugin and for 50 bucks it is probably the easiest way to add chaos, distortion and all sorts of other unsetting effects to your video in Adobe After Effects. Now this is going to be a beginner tutorial and I will assume that if you hear this message you may not even have used After Effects much before but don't worry, I'll be alright, we'll, we'll be okay. But now let's get started with the tutorial. Welcome to Adobe After Effects and as always I am going to start out with an empty composition. The clip that I will be using for this tutorial is the death stare effect that we created in my last tutorial. There will be a download link for this clip in the description of the video but you can really follow along with any video clip that you have. Now let's add some really nice twitchy effects to this scene. To do that I am going to use the Twitch plugin from Video Copilot. Now all the effects, everything I'm showing you in this tutorial you can actually do without the Twitch plugin and do leave me a comment down in the section below if you want to know how to do that. However the Twitch plugin makes your life a whole lot easier and I've been using it a ton and so I really want to show you how to use it. Once you've installed the Twitch plugin simply go into your effects and presets panel and search for the Twitch effect. Let's apply the Twitch effect to the death stare layer. If you scrub through your composition you will notice that nothing actually has changed and by default the Twitch effect actually has no effect on your video. That is because if we go into the effects controls for the Twitch effect and expand the enable tab you will see that the Twitch effect actually has a number of different behaviors but by default they are all disabled. The Twitch plugin has the capabilities to add six different types of glitches into your video. Let's enable blur, rewind back our composition and play it back. As you can see the Twitch plugin has introduced random blurry effects into your video. Let's disable the blur and enable the color. Rewind and play this back. The concept is exactly the same except this time the glitchiness happens with the color of the video. Let's switch over to light. Rewind and play this back. This time as you probably have guessed the brightness of the layer has been randomized. This particular behavior actually worked really well for this particular shot just because it gives it a really intense and evil feel. Enabling scale will, yes of course, just zoom in and out with the camera so it'll just scale up the layer randomly. Slide will randomly move the layer around. And finally the time behavior will introduce random glitches to the timing of your video. Again this actually works really well for this clip just it's a really nice horror effect. A lot of the time when you enable a specific behavior on the Twitch plugin however you will notice that the default settings are just a little bit too strong it's just a little bit too glitchy. Let's go back into the effect disable the time behavior and let's re-enable the slide behavior because as you scrub through you can clearly notice that this is way too strong it's just a little bit too chaotic. Fortunately the Twitch plugin gives you detailed control over every single behavior and you can find those settings under the operator controls. And right now we only have the slide behavior enabled therefore only the operator controls for the slide behavior are available. Let's expand the slide and there is a whole bunch of different settings you can control the amount of the slides so if we scrub to a position where you can see a slide effect right here it's really strong the whole image is smeared across the screen. If we reduce the slide amount we are controlling how much the clip is going to slide. So maybe let's set this to around 10 which is just a little bit so it's just a little bit twitchy. You can also control how often these random slide effects occur simply by increasing or decreasing the slide twitches property. Let's jack this up a little bit to 7 and now if we scrub through the composition you can see that it's shaking all the time. Let's reset this property to maybe 0.2. I really just want very very occasional slide glitches happening. Let's rewind the composition and play this effect back. 
Yep, that is much better. It's a lot more subtle, but there's still occasional glitches happening, which I really like. There are quite a few other options for the slide behavior, uh, like direction, spread, tendency, but one of the options that I personally use quite a lot and I get asked about a lot is the RGB split. When you are increasing the slide RGB split property, you are telling the Twitch effect to disconnect your red, green and blue channels of the video and slide them around independently. This will introduce some really, really cool color fringing, kind of looks like very intense chromatic aberration into your video. I really, really like this effect and I do use it quite frequently to create a lot of the twitchy transitions in quite a few of my tutorials. Let's rewind the composition and play it back. Yeah, I really, really like it, especially right here when Selena is staring straight into the camera. It just looks really nice and evil and like there's something just going wrong with your video because of the intensity of the stare. Let's enable a few additional behaviors to make the Twitch effect look a little bit more intricate and detailed. First, let's enable the color behavior. You will notice that as I enable and disable this behavior, the operator controls for the color behavior become available. Let's expand the color controls and the color settings are fairly similar to what you have available for the slide. So you have a color amount, you have color twitches. You can determine which color the video shifts into. You can also randomize the color and you can give it a random seed. Before we start tweaking any of the settings, let's just rewind the video and play it back. That doesn't actually look too bad, but I'm not a big fan of the orange. It kind of looks a little bit too warm for my liking. So let's select the colorize option and let's change this to a fairly bright blue. Yep, I think that works a little bit better. Let's rewind the composition and play it back. Nice, that actually looks quite good. Personally, I always prefer to introduce a little bit of randomness just so it doesn't look all so samey throughout the entire effect. So let's jack up the color randomness just a little bit, maybe to about 30. Rewind this and play it back. Cool, that looks really good. As always, feel free to tweak this to your liking. Finally, because I thought it really suited this particular scene, let's also re-enable the light behavior. Let's expand the light operator controls and as before you have an amount and you can control the frequency of the twitches. You also have a light behavior so you can control whether the video will only ever twitch into the brighter areas, whether it can go darker or both. Let's leave this behavior in brighter and as you can see, all of the twitches only ever lighten the video. If we change the behavior over to darker, all of the twitches will darken the video. Personally, I think this is getting a little bit too dark, so maybe let's try out both. Again, I'm probably not too big a fan of that. It's a little bit too strong. Again, you could simply reduce the light amount, so maybe let's lower this a little bit to maybe around 20. And I'm also going to reset the behavior to brighter. I simply felt that it suited the scene a little bit better. Finally, I'm also going to lower the frequency, so the light twitches property to 0.5. I just thought it was a little bit too wild, a little bit too random. So let's rewind the composition, play this back and check it out. Nice, I really like how this is starting to look. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the behaviors for the blur scale and time. You can play around with them and figure them out yourself. It's just a lot of fun to play with because there are so many options and frankly, most of them turn out looking really cool. Instead, one thing I want to show you are the global behaviors for the Twitch plugin. If you expand the behaviors tab, you will find a number of options that apply to all of the operators that are currently enabled. You have an ease in and an ease out property, which will control how quickly the twitches start. So you can have them start slowly and increase and swell up and then swell back down, or you can have them kick in instantly. You also have a border option that only really applies to the slide effect. Let me try to find a moment when the clip is sliding. Now, I don't think it's sliding enough to really make a difference, but you could change the border to either mirror the edges or tile them or ignore them or expand the clip as it's sliding around the composition. You also have an option to show Twitch only. What this will do, let's rewind and play this back. Now, it looks like we have random moments of just black in our composition, but what is actually happening is that the video will only be shown if one of the behaviors is currently kicking in and applying one of the glitches to the video. Again, this is kind of up to your own creativity. The way I would use this is I would duplicate my base layer, delete the twitch effect from the bottom layer, and on the top layer that has the twitch effect applied, 
make sure that you have the show twitch only flag enabled. Then you could change the blend mode of the top layer to let's say classic difference. Let's rewind. Whoa. That is pretty trippy, but it's a pretty cool effect. Let's change the blend mode of the top layer back to normal. Delete the one on the bottom and on the top one, which has the Twitch effect applied, let's disable the show Twitch only. So we're back to where we started. If you're just looking for inspiration or you just want to find a Twitchy effect really, really quickly, the Twitch plugin comes packaged with quite a number of really cool presets that you can use. Let's delete the Twitch effect of this layer and Personally, I always like to apply all of my effects to adjustment layers, especially when I'm working with presets. So let's create a new adjustment layer. Let's call this adjustment layer Twitch and let's clear our effects and presets search. Under the animation presets, you will find a Twitch folder. And if you expand the Twitch folder, you will find quite a number of ready-made Twitch presets that you can simply apply to your adjustment layer. And they're really easy to apply. Just grab the preset and let's drag it to the adjustment layer. Let go. And there you go. Let's rewind and play this back. This preset called Bad Distortion is actually very similar to what we just set up manually. Personally, I think the effect is a little bit too strong. So you could go into the Twitch effect and lower the overall amount or lower the speed or you could open up the opacity of your adjustment layer and bring that down. There's lots of different ways to apply these twitchy effects to your videos and there's a ton of options and different settings and different glitches and twitches that you can create and they all come out looking pretty cool. So if you haven't yet, I highly recommend that you go check out the Twitch plugin from Video Copilot and as always, there is going to be a link down in the description of the video. We made it people and it wasn't really all that hard now, was it? I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions you can easily reach me on Radio Channel 416 or failing that you can just leave me a comment down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up, favorite it, share it around, you know, the usual. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials don't forget to go to youtube.com slash surface studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this message and until next time I will see you later.